It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. And with me in the KFG studios, as always, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Do you have a goal of having at least a million dollars saved up inside your 401k uh, and your various retirement accounts? Well, guess what? Data from last quarter showed the number of people achieving this milestone skyrocketed. So we're going to share how they did it and how you can achieve it as well. That and more coming up on this hour of the Wise Money Show. That's right. That's right. If you have a question for the program or have a have a question or or would like to review your situation, we're here to help. You can call or text us 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com is where you can find us. You can submit a question for the show right there or reach out to us. And then uh, anywhere you're at on social media, we are there as well. Just search the Wise Money Show. So I had this question the other day. Um, what's it mean? What's it mean to be a millionaire? Have you guys had that question recently? Mm-mm. I have. I have anticipated this, and not like, but I've. It seems like this shift is happening, or it's happened in the past five to ten years. Millionaire used to be total net worth. Yeah. Right. But I had. I had this question where someone said, "What? So what's it mean to be a millionaire? Does that include your house, or is it just your investments?" And and I said, actually, it's interesting you bring that up because I've been thinking of this that I do think it's shifted. So millionaire does mean your total net worth. So your cash, your investments, your you know equity in your house, all that sort of stuff, all your assets minus your liabilities, what's your net worth? But I think the definition, or at least the, um, I don't know, the goal is shifting to be, you no know, millionaire is I have a million dollars saved up. Yeah, more of your liquid net worth. Yeah. Is it actual money that you can spend as opposed to a house that you're living in and a car you're driving and everything? I think if you if we did Jay Leno sidewalk, just sort of surveys, uh, questions, that I think that would be people's answer, is I have a million dollars saved up. Yeah. There's, so, well, this show's about financial planning. It's not about having a million dollars, but that is a milestone many people are striving for. We're going to answer the question, is it one that you should be striving for? But recently, Fidelity, uh, largest 401k provider out there, uh, released some very interesting data. And it's about how the number of 401k millionaires, so people with a million dollars or more in a 401k balance, jumped 20% last year. And the article actually had a lot of details. So so guys, first, like, what, what's, your, what's your read on this this kind of top level headline, it's sort of 20% increase in the number of 401k millionaires. Well, I mean, it certainly speaks to how great the market was last year, right? I mean, so many or last people, that last quarter, really. Yeah, that's right. You know, even over the past six to seven months or so, the market has been cooperating nicely for the most part. And um, so it, it'd be interesting to me to know, well, how many of these people were millionaires before? They kind of fell back out of that because the market was down so much in 2022. And then, you know, nice recovery happening in 2023. So they're back to millionaires. Maybe many of them are there for the very first time, though, as they've continued to save and, and build and everything. But certainly this is tailwind of the market driving a lot of this. I agree with that. Yeah. So if you look at the data in the fourth quarter of 2021, there were 442,000. So 442 in 2021, and there are 422 at the end of 23. Right. So there are fewer right now, even though the market's uh, back to all, all-time highs. And and you you know what? I mean, we could camp here. We're not going to, but we could camp here because the market, quote unquote, that's large cap U.S. stocks. Your portfolio is not just large cap U.S. stocks. Yeah. Right. You've got mid cap. You've got small cap. You've got international. You've got other pieces. And those are not all back to all-time highs. But yes, that data point, there are fewer 401k millionaires right now in this data point than the, the previous peak back in the fall of 21. And I can tell you the difference, the, the $20,000 20, participant difference there. What is it? They're the ones that um, had a knee-jerk reaction at the bottom of the market and in the third quarter of 2022. 
when things were down, they looked at this and they said, I've got to do something. Yeah. And they did something. And so there are 20,000 of those people that got left behind. So that's one group. There could be some retirees in there that have started spending down some of this money. But what I was going to say along those same lines, Kevin, is what didn't get these people to millionaire status was their savings account at the bank. Right? Yeah, right. Even with interest rates being reasonably respectful these days, you don't save your way towards being a millionaire. You invest your way there. You have to have assets that are actually building and growing for you. Okay, so Josh, you took me you took me right there because because is it luck that gets you there? Is it this unbelievable investment strategy that gets you there? Is this well, you better be able to invest in Nvidia stock inside your 401k because if you can't find that thing, then then you're not going to get there. No. No, in fact, this data, we're going to link the article in the, the show description, the notes here. Um, the data actually tells us a little bit. Okay, so the uh, on average, and, and guys, feel free, pull, pull up the data and let's, let's popcorn this, but um, it breaks down sort of the average 401k contributor uh, in, in, for all of Fidelity, but then it, it, it breaks down the millionaire habits. Those that have a million dollars in their 401k, actually are contributing significantly more. And you've probably heard us say you got to be saving at least 15%. Now, that's a rule of thumb. You can't you can't run your finances based off of rule of thumbs. But the average 401k uh, millionaire has around 26% going into their 401k. They're saving just under 20%. They're getting a match 26% almost going into their 401k contributing. That is what's helping them reach this millionaire status. So, so 26%, that would include the match. I think that's important because if if you look at that and you say, well, what could someone contribute today? If you're up to age 49, you could contribute 23,000 into a 401k. Um, not a ton of people under 49 have 23,000 that they can put into a plan. So, and then if you're 50 or older, you can put 30,000 500 into a plan. So the people that are there, um, it, to get 26% into a plan, that would almost suggest you've got a lower income. So it's a higher percentage of that income. And I, um, as they say, figures lie in liar's figure. So I, I, don't, I don't know that I fully yeah. understand that that, it, it, let's assume that it's right. But that would that would say that it's not the people that have super high incomes that are that are getting this done. It's the it's the people that might have an income of a hundred grand. Yeah, that's right. That that's are getting right. it done, and they may have reached their peak earning years. It's the best income they've had. They're getting closer to retirement. They may have uh, launched kids from the nest. They're past the college years for them. Maybe they just have more flexibility and they're playing some catch up at the end of their working career. You know, most people who have a million dollars are they're well into their careers. Maybe they're even coming towards the end of their career. And this is the nest egg that they're going to retire off of. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then I would just encourage you that as you come to the end of, of your working productive years, it is a time where you can save more aggressively. The, as Kevin was pointing out, the, the maximum contributions are bigger for you. And maybe for the first time, you can contribute at a level that these studies are suggesting. And that, that can put the finishing touches on a nest egg that can carry you into retirement at times. Here's some other good news. Whether you find yourself encouraged or, or discouraged um, and by, by you know the number of 401k millionaires skyrocketing, if you're not there, don't don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. There is a path for you to get where you are trying to go. We're gonna we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. But seventy eight percent of four hundred one k savers are contributing at a level to get the full company match. Seventy eight percent. If you would have asked me again, Jay Leno style, I probably would have said sixty percent. So seventy eight higher. I want that number to be a hundred. Hundred, right? For it's sure. got, it's got. Right. It's got to be a hundred, and it's almost like, wow, you can't expect hundred. No, it's free money. Free, no, and not free money. You're earning it. You are working hard, and you're earning it. So just, just. So I, my guess is part of the reason why it's seventy eight percent, not a hundred. Match a lot of match formulas are too complicated. People think that they're doing enough to get the full company match, and they haven't actually checked to confirm that they are. So maybe that's your action item right now. 
Let's drive that 78% that are getting the full company match. Let's drive that. Let's drive that higher. Um, total contribution rate on average is around 14%. That's also higher than what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. So we're going to break down a little bit more of the data. But then the question is, should you be trying to be, should you be striving towards a million dollar 401k balance or what should be your goal and how do you get there? So we've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every Saturday morning, also on podcasts at the same time, but also on a couple local radio stations, which is why the content's broken up the way that it is. It's a talk show, and yeah, we're going to banter. There's there's discussion, but we're also going to deliver some actionable content to you as well. If you're looking for more punchy, like more direct, shorter content, we've got that as well. Well over a 1,000 videos right here on this channel. Uh, about how you can take your next wise step in your financial life videos all throughout the work week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. If you like the content, like the content, leave questions and comments below as well. We appreciate it. Alrighty. Um, I actually didn't know if that was all, <laughs> if that was everything we needed to hit in the article or if there were any other factoids. Oh, average age of a retirement account millionaire 59 the average savings tenure of fidelity account millionaires was 26 years i think we need to sh- uh, sh- say sh- 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 <laughs> both of those <laughs> sh- 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 for sh- <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah Let's well, so and the other thing that you that you don't want to do is you don't want to, um, I don't know, I I wouldn't tell the person that's got a couple hundred grand in their plan to to gap out here. Correct. Well, we're gonna yeah. hit that. We're gonna yeah. hit that next. Yeah, well, that's what so, I'm saying. Yeah, stick with me, Mike. I got you. You got me. I heard it. It was your idea first, Kevin. That's right. All right, here we go. Have a goal of saving up a, a million bucks. How do you get there? How do you get there? The answer is one step at a time, but we're actually, we're going to break down, give you some more actionable items. This is the Wise Money Show with Cohorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Cohorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast, wherever you listen. Uh, search the Wise Money Show. Subscribe to it there. Follow us there. Rate the program there as well. We appreciate that. That helps other folks that are looking for content, wise uh, financial content that helps them find us and also great feedback for us. So, so find us on podcast, rate the program there. We appreciate it. All right. We're talking about a, a recent study from Fidelity, the behemoth 401k behemoth. They basically broke down and said, yeah, we've got, uh, we had a soaring number of 401k participants reach the threshold of a million bucks in their 401k. That's, it's fantastic. Not quite at the peak that it was back in in uh, in 2021, but but it was a surge nonetheless. So how'd they get there? Was it luck? Was it just you know uh, found the the hot stock? No, it's it's behavior. Couple other data points here that that speaks directly to that, and that is the average saving tenure of a Fidelity 401k participant who who reached that million dollar threshold. So basically, how long did it take to get them there? Mm-hmm. On average, 26 years. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. You know what else it speaks to? And we don't we don't talk about this that much. We've done a couple of shows where we've mentioned it. There's 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 benefits to longevity at your company. And I know you're probably dealing with some stuff and your job's changed a bunch and and blah blah blah. However, when you're shifting from job to job to job, there's typically gaps in in how much you're saving or whether you can save because you're not eligible yet, or there's an income change, or you moved, and so the dust needs to settle, and blah, 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 versus staying in one place, you're just saving consistently, consistently, consistently. Um, And then the average age of the retirement account millionaire is around 59. So guys, it takes time. It Mm -hmm. takes time. So so if you are listening right now, if you are listening and, and you're at 100, or you're at 150, or you're at 50, or you're at 500. There's no, there's no emotions of ah, oh, gosh, woulda, coulda, shoulda, or frustration. No, no, no. It takes, it truly takes one paycheck at a time, mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. contribution at a time to get you there, and it takes a long time. You know, one of the things that Kevin's often said that I find very inspiring is 
thinking about how many doubles are you going to get during your working career. You, you, you've mentioned that a number of times. And, you know, if you are someone who you're relatively new to investing, you've been building up the habit, you're saving consistently, and maybe you have $100,000. Well, you're going to blink your eyes and that will be 200 before you know it. You know, if, especially if you keep on contributing and the market, your investments um, do their part, you, you could double that pretty quickly. And once you're at 200, it could be another seven years or less and you're doubled again. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're doubling a third time. And to, to me, it's hard to recognize that that is going to happen and that there really is this hockey stick type of shape to the growth of your account if you just stay consistent over time. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of times as people get close to the end of their working career, they make so much ground up, especially if you know you can take advantage of a, a down market and you're, you're buying cheap for a little while right before retirement. That could be one of the best blessings that happens. And I guarantee you it will be one of the things that freaks you out the most. Yeah. You know, you're, you're getting close to retirement. It feels like the, the finish line is within sight. And then all of a sudden it moves away from you because the market shrinks back and your investments are declining. Don't, don't freak out at a time like that. As long as you stay consistent with that saving, you're actually maybe taking advantage of an amazing buying opportunity right on the eve of retirement, and you can have an amazing uh, amount of ground that gets covered in a short amount of time. Here's another last data point, and then we're going to move on here, and, and that is nearly half of people increase, and this is at Fidelity, but nearly half of 401k participants increase their contribution rate in the fourth quarter. Now, I, on the surface, very encouraging. That that's great news. However, which which dollars, which contributions are working harder for you? The the ones that were contributed in the fourth quarter of of 2023, or the ones that were contributed in the third quarter of 2021 when you didn't want to invest, when the market was down 27 percent? It's those dollars that actually are working harder for you right now. And so I agree, Josh. I mean, one of one of the ways to get to this 401k millionaire status or get a million dollars saved up or whatever your goal is, is to be consistent during good times and bad, and even seeing bad times as buying opportunities to possibly, hopefully save even more. So here's the question. Before, well, how do you get there? Do you even, like, does this even matter? Hmm. Does it even matter? Like is a million dollars even the yeah. right target? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's absolutely not. It, um, I'm. <laughs> it should be three million. No. <laughs> well, it's it's there's there is an, a number, there is an amount, and I was uh, just uh, walking around the walking track with a friend because in northern Indiana, the blustery winter weather, uh, sometimes it gets so cold. I say, Winston, I'm not taking you for a walk. I am going to the gym where they don't <laughs> allow dogs. So I'm walking, and my buddy comes, and we coach soccer together. And uh, he said his son was excited because he said, uh, it, all I need to do is save up 800000 and then I can kind of retire, right? This kind of, this fire movement. And um, he asked me what I thought about that. And um, <laughs> I didn't laugh, which I, I think was... <laughs> You're uh, better than me. <laughs> I'm, I'm making some progress. But that's, but that is... That is natural, and especially when you're standing at the very base of the mountain and looking and saying, I have to climb that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, he's uh, less, maybe less than a year into his working career, and he's thinking, okay, how soon can I be done? And this is where you say, well, embrace it. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be 800000 um, because by the time you have 800000 in your 401k, you have a uh, you know a wife and two and a half children and a dog <laughs> and all of these other things and you're you're trying um, and you say no I I'm not going to be able to live the lifestyle that I would like on eight hundred thousand dollars. Well, I mean that brings me back to so there's there's five factors that determine your ability to retire and they're they're interrelated and so how much you have saved up is one of them. Mm -hmm. And and early in my career, I had an individual that that yeah, their tar his target and he'd done all the math was a million bucks. Happened to reach it in his early fifties. It was fantastic. But what he wasn't accounting for <laughs> is how his spending would be different. And now that million dollars needs to last even longer because if your working career ends, 
you know, eight years earlier. Now that's got to it's it's got to last even longer. Mm -hmm. And the reality was against some of our advice, still transitioned into retirement and between taxes and health insurance and just, well, I'm young, I want to spend more, spent about 40 percent more than what he had projected and what they had spent take home prior to retiring. They spent more. Mm-hmm. And throw on top of that, the markets, at least for the short term, early part of that retirement, didn't really cooperate. And just there was a there was lack of awareness to the other four factors that determine whether you're able to retire. So I would agree, Kevin, it's not a million dollars. Don't don't fixate on that. And if, if that's your goal, if it gives you motivation. And so for this young individual, if eight hundred thousand, if that gives them motivation yeah. to save. Oh, my goodness. Go use that. It. Use mm-hmm. that fuel. Mm-hmm. but know that it's more than just a number and there's no magic number that works for every single person. For some of you, it might be two. For some of you, it could be 400,000. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to be a million. And, th- and that's the other frustrating part about this data is 401k millionaires. What about Roth IRA? What about IRA? What about pension? What about what about the other important assets or, or components of your financial life? This is just focusing on 401k. Ah, yeah, it's, it's noise, in my opinion. And, and the other... Uh, kind of fun thing. This morning, I was having a, a conversation with one of our all-star financial advisors, Brandon, and he had gotten his hair cut, and he, was, he takes care of the gal who cuts my hair. She's cut my hair for 30 years, and he said, you know, she's going to cut hair. She's told him she's going to cut hair as long as, long as she can stand up. She's going to cut <laughs> hair. And, if, and, and we kind of joke about, like, if you want a financial plan that is going to work, Never, yeah. never stop working. Mm-hmm. And some people think, oh, well, well, that's a that's a horrible thing. Almost like you shouldn't even say that out loud. But I'm like, no, if you if you like what you do and you're good at it and you enjoy it and you have fun, mm-hmm. you know, I that's keep doing it. Yeah. Good on you. And um, and you you probably don't need you might not need a million bucks in your 401k if you keep working. Yeah. In, in that sense, I mean, if that if that's the case. I mean, you still need to be doing comprehensive financial planning, working with your CFP, mm-hmm. because I, I've had folks that have said the same thing, and then they have a health issue or a family member has a health issue, and all of a sudden that plan changes. And are you prepared when life throws you a curveball? So, all right, how do you reach that millionaire status or whatever the level you're aiming for? We've got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Okay. Okay, so... Y- did, okay, I heard you, but I might not have heard you. Uh, so, did, did you 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 said there are five factors, but you did not go through the five factors. I didn't. So Correct. I was going to ask, do we want to pick that back up and well, then weave that into? Okay, so what are the actionable steps that you need to take right now to start reaching your savings goal? I you could, uh, and there are there are six things that need to happen with your four hundred one k. I would that I would have that which is be, your your contribution pre yep. post investment allocation rebalance beneficiaries I would have that be in the you know the actionable okay whether a million's your goal or yep. if it's two or if it's less what are the steps that you need to take to get there and there I I just I, we can free flow that and you can list those and when we when we hit that sound okay surely I, so I feel again like you heard me, but you didn't hear me. Based <laughs> yeah, on that, I was watching his eyes. So too. I don't I, know. I, well, I know there were words. So <laughs> I heard words. So does that count? They were English. Yes. I can attest so, to that. So okay. yes, I want to hit those. I'm following you, buddy. In the um, in this next segment, but once we get to the next question, which is what are the things that you should be doing right now yeah. to take your steps towards yeah. getting to a million, or getting to two, or getting to wherever. Okay. Do you want to share the five factors? Okay. Because, yeah, I think that if 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 someone was done listening to this, what I would want them to say is, I need to focus on the process, not uh, the result. Yeah, right. Can we can we get that through? Um, thank you, because I was I wanted to share that exact that exact phrasing, and I'm going to do that right now, and then we'll get into it. Great. Well, okay. if you if you if you could share that right now, it'd be awesome. I will share it right now. No. All right. 
how do you how do you reach what are what are some of the things you need to do right now to reach your own savings goal? How do you do that? What what action steps do you need to take right now? What adjustments should you make? We're helping with that and more. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show, not on TikTok. Not gonna do it. Uh, not I don't think we're gonna do it. So there you go. No, <laughs> we do not want the Chinese censoring us. We prefer the Americans to censor us. There we go. <laughs> wow. Okay. okay. Uh. Uh, so how do you how do you uh, achieve your savings goal? And should that savings goal be a million bucks? We, we recent data showed that folks with a million dollars in their four hundred one k that number skyrocketed recently. Is that uh, is that a goal you should be striving towards? Guys, it's it's about process, not result. And and forgive me if I'm thinking too much about this because we're in baseball season, and actually I'm just a part time financial planner. I'm a full time <laughs> baseball coach for eleven year olds. It's so serious. Just kidding. It's not that serious. But no, he's not know, kidding. It is that serious. <laughs> but so so here's the deal. You you've got these you've got these young kids who care so much and they're so competitive, and they strike out. Or they'll hit a, a weak grounder when you know they can hit better, and they just it's result, 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 and it's it's like no, 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 no process, mm-hmm. process, mm-hmm. process, process, process will lead you to long term better results, and you'll get better, you'll improve. You know what? Whether you hit a, a great shot right to someone, they get you out, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. That's the result. Don't fixate on the result. Fixate on the process. So the process to figure out well, how much do I need to save? Do I need a million bucks or not? That's that's encased within your comprehensive financial plan, looking at all six areas. But as far as, well, you're saving up for something, if you're saving up for retirement, that's also encased in these five factors. Josh, share that's those right. real quick. And, and it's very personal as well, right? Yeah. It, it is a different answer for you compared to your neighbor, compared to your brother-in-law, compared to your parents. It's your plan. And Part of the reason that it gets personalized is because you get to make your own decisions on these five factors. It's these five factors that answer the question, well, how much do you need to have saved in order to be able to retire comfortably someday? And it boils down to things like, well, what age do you want to retire? You guys were talking earlier about someone who retired in their early 50s instead of their early 60s. That that difference in years uh, it makes retirement longer. Yeah. It makes your preparation stage shorter. It means you need to have more money potentially saved. And so you, you adjust the age even just a little bit up or down. Um, and it, it will impact that calculation. How much do you need to have saved? Yeah. I mean, how long is retirement going to last? Mm-hmm. You'd, you'd think, well, the longer it lasts, the more I need to have saved up. And that flies in the face of, of a lot of people thinking that, well, it's just a number. Once I reach a number, then I'm done. Well, that's like saying, well, once I save up $1,000, I'm going to Disney World. Well, how long are you going to go? How long are you going to stay? <laughs> that, yeah. that, that influences how much you need to have saved up. Exactly. That'll cover a day. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Half well, day. And, and that's a good segue <laughs> into the second factor, because how much you spend in retirement will also determine how large of a nest egg you're going to need. You know, what you know today, if you're in your 30s and, and uh, you're at a certain stage in life, maybe starting to raise kids, what you know of spending today is going to be different out there in the future. If for no other reason, because life keeps getting more expensive due to inflation. And what, what you need out there in the future is going to be a bigger dollar amount. And so the nest egg is, uh, it has to be proportionately larger as well. Uh, the amount of income you're going to have in retirement is another factor. Are you going to work part-time? Are you going to have social security or a pension? What, what sources of steady inflow of cash will help to offset the needs from your nest egg? I, 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 how are you going to optimize social security for your situation? Right. So for many people, that is the only source of, of non-investment kind of retirement income. And that's one of the biggest financial decisions you're going to make in your life. Are you going to make it in the context of your entire financial situation? What's your process for making that decision? Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, we started this show referring to a fidelity study that talked about more millionaires and how aggressive they're saving in recent years. And your savings rate is one of the determinants on how much nest egg you're going to be able to build out there for the future. You know, are, are you trickling a few dollars in sporadically? You turn it on, you turn it off from year to year, or are you consistently contributing, making sure you get every 
uh, employer match dollar that you can, not leaving any free money on the table, that, that kind of thing. Um, but your savings rate is one of the determinants that you get to decide. And, and that's a budgeting concern, right? Like you get to choose what your lifestyle is and how much is available to set aside for the 70-year-old you. And then finally, what are you going to do with that nest egg after those dollars are saved up or, or as they're being saved up? Are you investing them? Do you have a real growth engine that's helping this nest egg to grow organically on its own? Or are you investing very, very conservatively and it's almost like you're just sort of stockpiling it in, in your bunker, so to speak? Um, or, or is this uh, actually being planted and it's growing on its own? Yeah. So those are the five factors. They're interrelated. They're choices that you get to make, and oftentimes you think, no, 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 that's just sort of happening automatically. No, no, you actually get to get to choose when you're going to draw Social Security. Get to choose, uh, you, you know, your your monthly subscriptions uh, for for Netflix and these other things. You get to choose your spending habits. You get to choose, for the most part, when you're when you're going to retire. Uh, but they're interrelated. You can't make a decision in one that's independent of the others. It's going to influence the others. So, well, you can't make a decision on just your retirement goal without considering all your other goals as well. Right. Because you have competition for your dollars, don't you? You've got kids that need to be educated and, and raised. You've got mortgages that you want to pay off and cars that need to be replaced and things. There's all these demands on your cash flow, and they, they do represent competition for the retirement goal. That's why we consider this an overall financial planning decision, not just an investment choice or a savings rate that you've got to figure out. So that's your process. That, that's your process. Because a million dollars is not important. It does not matter. It could be 700 for you. It could be 500 for you. It could be 1.5. It could be 1.6. And there's no, there's no hubris. There's no pride in that number. And there's no emotion if, if you're well below where you need to be. It's just process. And who's guiding you along the way? Who's going to help you uh, with those inputs and then calculate, well, you're at a 74% confident rate right now. If you make these adjustments, then you'll be at an 85% confidence rate and you'll be at, at, on a better track. Who's going to help you with all that? Your CFP. Your CFP doing comprehensive financial planning. All right. So that's the process. If there's one action item that you take away, it's that. As Kevin says, run, don't walk to your CFP's office and, and find out where you stand. Find out how much you need to be saving up and where you need to be to ensure that you're on track. And do it now because I can't tell you how many folks we've been meeting with that are coming in and they're you know, 62, 64, 66, and they're saying, hey, I've never worked with a financial planner. I am one of those 401k millionaire, multimillionaires. And I've never worked with an advisor before. And you're going to have some of the biggest financial decisions that you're ever going to make in your life. To Mike's point, what do I do with my 401k? When do I draw Social Security? How do I bridge the gap um, medic, medical insurance-wise? Um, what's the plan for this mountain that I've climbed to climb down that mountain and to make sure that I'm not paying an exorbitant amount of taxes on these, these retirement dollars that I've saved for so long or an exorbitant amount on my Medicare Part B premium. There's yeah. all, there's so many decisions and this is it's all strategy. Mm -hmm. And if you say I I you just again, we're biased. We believe you should have a great coach, just like Mike is. And I know some of you are listening and thinking, man, I wish I was 11 again. I'd love to play on Coach Bernard's team. <laughs> uh, but you can't. But but get a coach to help you walk you through these decisions. And it's got to be someone who works in the six areas of financial planning, yeah. not just as someone who schleps investments. It's one of the most important decisions that you make. It's who are you going to trust, yes. right? And that's one of the reasons why having a longer track record with your certified financial planner is a powerful mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Um, you, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting started right now, even if right now is on the eve of retirement. It's better today than it would be five years into retirement, potentially. However, it's even better yet to have some history together, to, um, to, to walk more miles together before you get to that fork in the road or that major um, life transition where you're, you're going from working into the retirement stage. Yep. All right. So we're going we're gonna to now turn this on its head and make it even more actionable more more tangible what do you need to do and again whether it is well 
I know in order to retire, I need to have a certain number saved up, but I do, I, I do that milestone in my head, that, that yardstick of a million bucks, that is something I care about and I want to get there. Well, then what do you need to do? How do you take your first step and, and how much do you need to save if, if that million dollars is your goal? So we're going to give you those action items, that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Uh, we're about uh, two seconds early there, Lindsay. So you need to put in a cartoon or something. Or... Slow us down a little bit. Slow the bit. So are we, are we doing the six? Four segment. The plan, six, land in the plane. Six decisions? No, we cut that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Okay. Let's start with doing math on the radio, though. That's always gone well. Always. Yeah. It's your unique ability. Let's do it. The survey says do more math. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Four segment, land the plane. Let's do it. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFC studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show, as well as a lot of other content, a ton of content. Is, uh, is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. Go to YouTube, search The Wise Money Show. You'll see every single talk show, what you're listening to right now, there as well. But lots of other videos. We actually post a video every single day of the work week taking helping you take one financial concept, applying it directly to your financial life. Of course, taking a comprehensive approach and how that issue touches all six areas of your financial life. So go to YouTube, search The Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there. Appreciate it. You can leave questions, comments, and all that right there as well. All right, time to get actionable. Time to get actionable. If you're striving to have a million dollars saved up in your 401k, what steps do you need to take? Well, I'm going to do the math for you right now. The article said it takes about 27 years. On average, it was 27 years of savings for that uh, 401k to build up to a million bucks. 26, but you're close 26. Enough. Uh, I'm off to a bad start. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do math on the radio. I'm just going to tell you right now. So if it's 27 years and your investments can perform an, an average rate of return of 8%, mm -hmm. so below market rates, okay, mm -hmm. you got to save about 11 grand a year. About 11 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whatever you're in, but that would include, you know, that's total savings. So what you're contributing and your company match. I'm saying, you know, that's that's relative, whether that's high, low, or right in between, depending on your situation. I think it's it's achievable. Okay, mm -hmm. it's achievable. Have it done a lot of uh, shows on this and actually did the math um, on, on the YouTube channel where, okay, well, what if you only have 10 years to save up? Or what if you have 15 years to save up? How much do you need to save? Do that work with your CFP. And the reason why you've got to take a comprehensive approach to your financial life is, like you said, Josh, previously, there, there's competition for those dollars. So if if in order to you for you to reach that level, you need to save fifteen hundred a month, but right now your budget suggests you can only save five hundred a month. Well, what do you need to get out of the way before you can save up that fifteen hundred? So work with your CFP on that. Figure out what that number is, how much you need to save, and get there. Take you take your first step. And if you can't go from where you are to where you need to be, that's fine. Just increase it a little bit. Just a little bit. And then a year later, a little bit more, a little bit more. Pretty soon you'll be there. Sounds like one of the six decisions you'd need to make related to All right. the 401k. So Kevin's been politicking. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So what what are the action items? Well, Kevin, I mean, there's six. There's six that yeah. everyone needs to needs to do. Every decision. And every really there could be more. But I mean, yeah. Mike's hit, hitting that one, which is the contribution percentage. What are you going to defer out of your paycheck into the plan? And if you're just getting started, we would say, we'll start with 15%. But here's the problem. In a vacuum, you would say, we'll just max max out, put the max you can put in. Um, you probably shouldn't do that. You probably should be working with your certified financial planner to say, how do I resource allocate and how much can I put in? Hopefully, you put in enough to capture the company match. And then there are other things that are in place that would allow you, there's something called auto escalation. Um, where you could say, I'm willing to increase my contribution percentage 1% a year until I get to 15% or 2% a year or 1% uh, every six months. So technology is making it so that these 401k platforms are so much better than they've ever been before. And there's some really cool tools on there that you say, hey, my 
you know, when I show up every day, I'm doing more than I'm getting paid for. Therefore, eventually, I should be getting paid more. Yep. And so I would I would get that auto escalation clause and say it's one of those disciplines. It's kind of like uh, taking a cold plunge. You know it's good for you, um, and you know it might not feel great right at first. Um, <laughs> Putting more, it mildly. Yes, that, that, <laughs> that's a different podcast. Uh, thank you, Andrew Huberman. So so for, the first one is your contribution percentage. How much am I going to get in? But I would get toward maxing the plan out. For start. How am I starting? I'm starting by cap- capturing the company match. Where am I towards the end? I'm maxing it out. Yep. And there's a – in that whole process, because we say, well, it's 26 years, that is going to be a hockey stick. You might be at 23 years and say there's no way I'm getting there in the last three years get it done Yeah, yeah. Uh, because of markets or other things. So hey, can, can I interject a question? You may. Where would you encourage people to start if there is no company match in their plan? You know, is there just a basic amount and then get on that escalator that you were referring to? I I love 10%. Mm-hmm. I just love 10% because that is simple. That that's that's easy math. Here's the problem. If I it, don't do 10% if you're paying the credit card company 24%. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So do maybe do 2% and do an auto escalation. But then you're working with your CFP, get your debt snowball to say, how do I get the, the highest interest debts paid first? Some other people say the, the smallest balance, whatever it is. Because here's the thing. You just need a process, an operating system for your financial household and run the miles. Do the work. You know, you're going to have to run some fast miles here. Get get the get the other five in. Oh, bye. you got to hustle. Oh, thanks a lot, Mike. So okay, so there you go. Uh, so number two, pre or post tax. Should it be? Should I get the tax break up front, or sh- or should I not take the tax break and have the money grow tax free forever? And oh, by the way, it's coming. The employer match can be tax. Um, you you can pay the tax on that as well. So everything in your four hundred one k can grow totally tax free. And there are people, there are people that are listening to the show right now who are do, doing pre-tax contributions to their 401k and paying zero federal income tax. Mm-hmm. And I would just encourage you to stop it. Just don't stop, stop, don't, don't do that anymore. Go into your 401k and flip the switch from pre-tax to post-tax. And or we, Roth. Yeah, it may can, say. can I be really, really, really uh, clear? Because there is something called after tax contributions, and you want to do Roth. You want right. to do Roth. That's what I said. <laughs> okay, so you you so you do you switch it to Roth, and again, this stuff it, it's it's simple in concept and a little complicated in the execution of. So if you're not sure you're doing the right thing, reach out to your CFP and. Uh, get them helped. The one of the biggest number three, one of the biggest decisions you're going to make in your financial, in your entire financial life, is your investment allocation. How am I going to invest the money? I, Mike says you got to get eight percent to get your million bucks. I met with a client that over twenty years they they had achieved about a half a percent, and I looked. I'm like, what's going on? Well, it was all in the money market account, mm, yeah. and it had Ouch. always been there. Yeah, pick, pick that prudent allocation for your situation and then stick to it regardless of the mood swings of the market. Yeah. So rebalance, that is number four. Pick your rebalance schedule depending on your situation. I I like I like monthly because you can capture some some peaks and, and valleys. Hmm. Or you could do quarterly, semi-annual, annual. But make sure you're rebalancing so that work gets done for you and you don't have to do it. The more you can automate in your financial life, the better you'll be. Uh, number five is your beneficiaries. Who gets the money when you don't? Um, if you die, Who? where's that money going? And you want to do it. So you, you don't want that to be your ex-wife. You don't want that to be your fill in the blank. Whoever shouldn't be getting it. Most retirement plans give you at least a couple layers of beneficiaries as well. You have a primary beneficiary. Mm-hmm. And if that person passes away with you or before you, there's contingent or secondary beneficiaries that you can name as well. Mm-hmm. And then number six, where are your old ones? 
where are the retirement plans that you've had in the past? Mike was talking about the benefit to being in the same place for a long time. But if you've had a number of different jobs, make sure you are bringing these along. We're just, uh, I was just working with a participant and she had a plan at Transamerica and we called Transamerica to try and figure it out. She's like, I don't know, it's you know, 2012, 13. It, it wasn't at Transamerica anymore. Yeah. Don't have stranded dollars. Don't have lost dollars. Don't lose track of dollars. Right. This is this is it's your retirement. It's it's critically important and not just important that you know those balances. You know how they're invested. You know who the beneficiaries are. You can plan properly for those. So absolutely. I'm going to throw a couple more on top. Those are six decisions everyone needs to make when you're contributing to a 401k or a retirement plan. Absolutely. And and working on those choices with your CFP can help you get to that million bucks. I'd add a couple more. Save your found money. You get a little bonus here or there, tax refund here or there. Save that as well. Find a way that adds up as well. Increase your savings rate every single year and, and make sure that you stay disciplined with your investment approach even when there's a down market. We will see them. So cheer, cheer the market down. If you're contributing right now, cheer the market down. All right. That's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group, KFG Wealth Management, LLC, and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.